All right, everybody, welcome to our first Tabletop RPG Network roundtable. So we're going to be doing one of these every month. Probably uh, from here on out, we'll probably be doing this on the first Monday of the month. Just so we can kind of talk about what we had going on in the month prior, what happened, what we got going on this month. And uh, we'll probably also be doing some one shots as well. I know I got an A-team one shot that we're going to be doing based out of El Paso with Savage Worlds. Um, yeah, so we're going to have some fun Did with that. Did you say an A-team? A-team one shot? A-team, as in B.A. Baracus, Face, Oh my god. Murdoch. I gotta pity the fools. Mm. I gotta be Mr. Yeah. T. I am the face. Yeah, so we, we yeah, I've got to, I'll have like five characters, maybe we'll, uh, I know that there was a, a female character in the cast for a season or so, so we'll have, uh, if Paula wants to join in, she can do that one, but yeah, so we'll do some one shots, we'll, and every month we'll do a round table, kind of talking about what we got going on, and uh, we got a couple of new faces this month, talking, speaking about face, uh, we have Engorgio. Welcome, Engorgio, to the Engorgio. network. Hello. Welcome. And also, Schmo, were you here for the first? Yeah, if Schmo was here for the first one. Yeah, I was one. here. Schmo, give everybody the wife beater pose, please. You know? Okay, there That's you go. He just has to lean back for that one. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have right. Paulette in the upper left uh, portion of the screen. She's going to be right. doing all the behind-the-scenes work for us. And uh, she's doing an excellent job with getting everyone's games promoted and letting everybody know what's going on with the network. And she's also doing the Facebook and the Twitter page as well that we have. So, yeah, thanks to uh, thanks to Bell for for doing that. That's really nice. Uh, so we're missing a couple of people tonight. We're missing Meta. And we're also missing Binoc. So uh, hopefully we'll get them in next month. And uh Topic for tonight, everybody, as we kind of go around the room, uh, we're going to be talking about how we got into RPGs, how we got into RPGs, and then seeing that we're all Fantasy Grounds users because we like to use the big leagues of the virtual tabletops out there. Uh, we'll all talk about how we got into Fantasy Grounds as well. So I'll just go ahead and start off on my screen from top left to bottom right so bell how did you get into tabletop games uh started playing as she's in the tavern in, sorry yeah as i'm in the tavern i started playing in high school for you know kept me occupied during the summer of course this was during the time that uh they were saying that it was an evil game and my mother figured she'd rather me play an evil game than perhaps be partying. So. Wow. That's yeah, I learned in prison, so it's about the same story. <laughs> <laughs> no, high school felt like prison. And as for Fantasy Grounds, actually I found your network and then checked out Fantasy Grounds and started playing on there. Awesome. So what about uh, Drake? Old clean cut tonight. Look at Drake. What's yeah, up, Drake? Yeah, I shaved all that shit off. I got paid. Looking good. Yeah. yeah. That was my, that was my beard from not having any income. So when I got income, I shaved. <laughs> how'd you get in the? You were able to afford that razor. Uh, well, uh, my brother and I uh, met a uh, a kid that lived down the street. He was uh, a year or so older than us. We were ten at the time. And uh, he invited us over, and uh, he broke out his new red box set that he had, and uh, and we played on the back porch. I remember we lived out in the in the boonies, right? And that was they were the closest house south of us, and it was like a half a mile away. So we rode down after school, like after our parents got home, and it was light out, right? And and I was on my dirt bike, my brother was on the back, and we went in and we played that evening and. We died. Fire beetles killed us. Yep. And uh, fire beetles. Yeah, yeah. We were scared shitless riding back in the dark on that dirt bike in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> this little teeny. Were tiny you afraid plastic. fire beetles were going to attack you guys? <laughs> yeah, fire beetles. Were that, out of that must have been a really intense game. <laughs> like shining the flashlight left and right. But that pretty much hooked me. Uh, 
off and on uh, in middle school and high school. Uh, we tried to play, but we didn't have anything regular, you know, here and there. There was a couple of sessions, you know, that we went like 10 times and then some shit happens. Somebody got emotional or whatever, and then we quit playing. And then I played during the army days. Actually, I played in boot camp. We made some dice out of rocks and our little green journal we wrote in and did a little map. I think I still have a couple of the maps we drew. But after after the military, I started, you know, the only way I can really get into this and have control over when I play and stuff is if I DM. So that's when I really got into it. I started DMing. And uh, I've been DMing ever since. So. And do you still I mean, use those rocks as dice now? I do. I have them. I have them right over here. Yeah, whenever you yeah, want to roll a 20. Right over there. They're right over there. <laughs> <laughs> we got them? Yeah. Uh, too good. How'd and then Fantasy, Fantasy Grounds, Grounds uh, I uh, started uh, just two years ago. I came across, I wanted something to manage campaigns, right? I've been looking for something for years. And uh, I got Tomb of Annihilation. I'm like, holy shit, the bookkeeping in this thing if you're playing tabletop, right? You know? I'm like, eh. so I started poking around again. I'm like, you know what? I remember this Fantasy Grounds thing I downloaded forever ago. So I dug out my old computer and I drug it out and I got my license key off of it and I got on Fantasy Grounds. It was like nine years old license key or something because when I looked at it back then, I was like, eh, eh, this is not what I'm looking for. The number was like but, six. That's how old it was. But after I started poking around with it and I found like your stream and Rob's stream and stuff going on, I'm like, hey. This is cool. And then now I'm a nerd. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> it, took, it took Fantasy oh, Grounds now? before he became a nerd. <laughs> yeah. he, he made yeah. rocks. He made dice out of rocks, but now he's the nerd. I bought these glasses, and now I'm a nerd. <laughs> how, about, how about you, Ungorgio? How'd you get into, uh, how'd you get into this hobby? Uh, I got into tabletop RPGs, let's see, 95. Um, I was nine years old. Um, my interview with the vampire just came out, and my mom w- loved vampires, so she went uh, and Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, she got that, so I started playing that for a couple years, and then for my twelfth birthday in '98, because I'm young, um, we f- we discovered some Dungeons and gas. we t- <laughs> discovered Dungeons and Dragons at our local store, and um, I've been with it ever since. I took uh, about a 12-year break from nine, or 2004 um, till like 0, or 16. Um, and then with Fantasy Grounds, I actually discovered it last June. Um, a friend of mine on Facebook made a post that he was looking for some online play. I was like, well, shit, I kind of miss playing with him because when we were overseas, that's what we were doing. And... Um, yeah, so that's me. Right on. Wife beater, what about you, Schmo? <laughs> well, how'd you get um, into it, man? How'd you get into the game? So I started back uh, with the fourth edition Red Box. Oh, God. Um, well, I, don't get ahead of yourself there. Um, All you got to so do is we were, mention fourth edition, and I just get excited. <laughs> we were, so we were playing, a, I was running a game after work. Um, and come to find out, the only thing they wanted to do while they were playing is just combat. And combat in fourth edition sucked. And they only wanted playing to playing it wrong. Probably That's probably so. And watch, watch and, him just get dropped from the stream. What? Combat? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, he just quit Break the network. <laughs> fourth edition sucks. What? So, so they what only is your user wanted... ID again, so I can take care of your account really quick. <laughs> They only wanted to play for like an hour or so after work as well. So that didn't last very long. Um, So then after that, I researched online stuff, saw Fantasy Grounds, bought it. It sucked. It was horrible. This was back before the Doug Doug Davidson days. Um, Then um, D&D Next started coming out. So I read through that stuff, uh, then Lost Minds of Fandover got released and I started playing that online with some people through the software that shall not be named. Um, and then fantasy grounds, uh, <laughs> they did a complete revamp, got pick, picked up the wizard of the coast stuff. We moved everybody over there and 
it's been amazing ever since. Yeah, I got in pre Doug and John as well, but I'll talk about that later. So yeah, it was, I remember sitting there at the kitchen table watching videos from, I can't think of the guy's name now on YouTube, how to make campaigns in was fourth it edition. Was it Keith Hensley or something? It wasn't Keith. It was some guy in like Colorado or Arizona or something like that. Uh, I can't, uh, Jason Hibben, I think is his name. Oh he yeah. Got some videos. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that guy owes you? me money. How about you, Marbanya? How'd you get into uh, D and D and or whatever you started playing? Well, it you know I kind of I figured this group would have very similar stories, so I could take little bits and pieces of all of them. And mine started in uh, uh, early high school, and we got a book fair in the library, right? So you can go through and buy these books. And well, hey man, there's these really cool looking books. The uh, you mean travel Advanced book Dungeons and Dragons Second Edition, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, and and uh, I'm like, oh yeah, that's 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 really cool, you know, or maybe it's first edition. I can't remember. So I grabbed a couple of these and I go to check out, and this girl I know, she's like, you know those those books are that Satan's in those books, you know, and I'm like, really, you know? <laughs> so Satan. you know, so what I do, I went ahead and bought them, and actually had to get somebody else. She wouldn't sell them to me. Uh, had to get somebody else to <laughs> sell them and check what them out. The fuck? Oh yeah, because Satan great. was they was gonna get her for selling these books to me. Um. My God, and uh, so I, I always buy a book. Bible. I always buy a Bible with one. Every buy a Bible buy a with your D and D books. Yeah, that's right. I'll take <laughs> research <laughs> for the church. <laughs> <laughs> condoms, right? You don't want to just get condoms. You get condoms, and then you got to get and then I'll take this banana and then some gum, and it's the same way. You're like, I'll take the fiend folio and this Bible and and maybe this and Fifty Shades of Gray. <laughs> so you're well, covered. Then you gotta the get the yeah. So uh, kind of yeah, I take these books home and I start reading them and I'm like, this is really cool. But I knew absolutely nobody that wanted to play it. I'm like, hey, man, look what I got. Yeah, yeah no, let's do Monopoly. Yeah, that's that's what I got. So uh, fast forward a couple of years later and I walk in. It's probably my senior year in high school, walk in this party and uh, I'm like, what are you guys doing? They're like, we're playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I want to roll wow, awesome. I'm like, it's a cool party, sure. dude. Sure. I'll roll one up. And uh, so we did. And um, that's how that started. And I played till I was uh, mid 20s, something like that. Then computers came along. I was a beta tester for EverQuest and got in on the early, you know, MMORPGs. And uh, many years ago, I found the uh, Scandinavian version of Fantasy Grounds pre uh, Doug and John. Bought it. What's that this called? Thing. Oh, it's, it's called uh, Grounds. Fantasy Grounds. Yeah. And uh, I bought that. It sucked. It didn't work. It didn't work. And and uh, I didn't buy it. I got I got the uh, subscription. And a couple of years go by, and I'm looking at my bank account. I'm like, what the what the hell is this? This Smite works or whatever it was called back then. And I guess Smite works. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, this had so for two years. I've been two or three years. I've been paying the subscription for this thing. <laughs> so I quit. And I was telling a buddy of mine about it. He goes, man, you need to go check it out. They've done some things with it. Go look up this guy, Digital Dungeon Master, and go look up this guy, Rob Tui. And I look, and I'm like, well, these are old farts. You know, this is – <laughs> God damn it. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking, <laughs> well, you know what? I'm an old fart too. And I started I started watching, looking for all these streams, and there weren't that many streams at the time. And uh, so I watched uh, Rob building modules, and, and they were playing uh, – uh, you guys were, you and David were both had some, had some games going at the time. And I watched, I'm like, okay, I got to get into this. So found fantasy grounds, college, lay rune. Hey, the, uh, you know, kudos to lay rune out there and his, and his efforts and, uh, met Drake about that same time and, uh, just went from there. Nice. You know what I found on eBay, a fantasy grounds box set from the old owners and I, wow. I put a bid on it and I want it. Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah. The shipping is ridiculous. It's from North Europe. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll have that in the next month and I'll, I'll show that off, but it's, that'll be cool. It's yeah, it's the old and I've, I've been looking for one of these for a long time and I've never seen one, but I got one. So yeah, it's kind of cool. So how about you, Rob? How'd you get into this? 
beautiful hobby that we all love so much. Well, David, the trouble How many began people did you in 1981. Uh, <laughs> when I was 15, I was in high school, as most people are when you're 15, and uh, met a met a friend just at high school, and he was carrying around the player's handbook at school, like walking up and down the halls with it, and he was getting beat up for it because in '81, this was not a cool thing to do, like it is now. So he invited me over to his house, and I got introduced to making a character and playing the game, and you know, just fell in love with the whole idea of it. And I played pretty seriously through high school, and then in the army uh, when I went to Korea, we played Dragonlance. Uh, you know, it was like four guys in a room and four guys in one room with bunk beds and shit. So we just set up a card table, and that's every night when we came home from work, we would just play Dragonlance. And, th and then uh, when I got out of the Army, then I pretty much didn't play, and I didn't play for 22 years. And then in 2009, I, f I got back into it with 4th Edition. Might have even got the red box uh, as well. And played 4th Edition, and did uh it's called it's called uh adventurers league now but it used to be called something else before D &D adventures encounters, league. layers D &D layers encounters layers, right yeah. so I did that met a bunch of guys in my town here and then i had a liver transplant so i was out for months and months because i was you know dying and then <laughs> when i got <laughs> when i got my new liver uh i was just basically at home here in spokane and i discovered quite by accident fantasy grounds in september of 14 and doug and john had just bought it i think around that time and i flipped out about all the 5e stuff that was available and i went and bought everything i bought the you know the the, the full ultimate license and all the 5e material every book they had and the next fucking day it all went on sale and i was like fuck me <laughs> So I emailed Doug. I'd never talked to him. And I said, hey, you know, I just bought everything. And I was disappointed. Like eight hours later, it all went on sale. And he said, I'll tell you what, just I'll give you a full refund. And then you can go rebuy it at the sale price. Because he couldn't just give me money back because of commissions and everything. And I said, oh, man. And so he had a customer for life. And then the next month, I started streaming. I had no idea. But I had seen Dave's show. And I'd seen Chris's show, Schmo's show. And I had no idea about streaming. I didn't even know Twitch was a thing. I'd never heard of it. You know, I knew what YouTube was. So I literally like took my 17 inch laptop and said, I'm going to stream Fantasy Grounds. And I got like a few guys together and made a game. I had no idea what I was doing. And then from that, uh, you know, now I've got a big business that I'm doing. And I've, I've got, I got to know Dave real well and Chris real well. And... I got to know Doug real well, and then he decided to make me in February of eighteen. He decided to make me an a part woman. of the team. Oh, a part of the team. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a part of the team. And so I, I do the social media. I am not an employee. Let's be clear about that. But I, I do work with uh, Smite Works. Yeah, because they get mad if you say you're an employee. Uh, but I do work with them, and I do the Fantasy Grounds Friday tips, and I, I do their Twitter account and some stuff on Facebook for them. And so I just have really been happy about the last five years uh you know streaming and doing dm's guild material and doing conversions for them and their smite work store and working with them on behalf of the social media and basically my my hobby has turned into a job which i'm not i'm not unhappy about but it's really become a thing for me so that's kind of my story awesome so what about you worm you're an old grognard as well. I am, I am man. I, I, I started in 82, kind of a similar story. I knew it was how you could get all the women. No, actually, uh, typical nerds. So I met a guy, and uh, we had a homosexual encounter. No, actually, I, I met a guy, and he had D&D, &D and, and he was talking about it. And I said, hey, that sounds pretty sweet. And uh, we made up a, um, a character, and we read through the book, and I thought that was that was kind of mm -hmm. cool. And then uh, I was in the Philippines. That's where I went to uh, high school. And it kind of a funny story because when I got back to the States, there was a whole bunch of like, uh, I, I kind of went crazy. And not only did I get the D&D, I got everything from TSR. I got, you know, the Dawn Patrol and uh, uh, Top Secret and a million things like that. And actually interesting 
when I got Top Secret, if you guys have ever seen Top Secret from TSR, it says across the top, Top Secret has like a gun and stuff on there. And when I came back to the Philippines, they wouldn't let me into the US with it. They thought it was like a real Top Secret thing. And I'm like, it's this role play game, you know, whatever. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I played for you know, years and years in, in, in uh, high school. And we, we did, you know, kind of like Rob Tui did, is that we, we uh, everybody come over to my house on the weekends and they'd just spend the night. We'd just play D&D pretty much from, you know, the morning until night. And then we'd go to school and stuff. Uh, then uh, uh, I guess uh, maybe 2013, 2011, uh, I hadn't played D&D in a long time, but I always bought the books. I just didn't have anybody to play with. And then there was this application. I don't know if you guys knew. It's an old application. I think it was called Vassal. And it lets you put, you know, basically people could connect and you could play, you know, kind of board games and whatever. Insert so, disc three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> I, I got this app and I put it down there and we were able to play. I had a bulletin board uh, back in the day. If you guys pre-internet don't know what that is just look it up but uh yeah we used vassal and we played a couple of games that way i thought hey this is pretty sweet and then um you know after a while uh i found some other software to use and uh then you know hooked up with dave i think in i don't know 2015 or something 2014 and uh played in a billion of his games and uh man it just it just it's just pretty sweet and then lately with the uh, fantasy grounds if we have time i want to show you uh kind of what i've set up for my game on fantasy grounds but uh so I, i'm i do all kinds of stuff and one of the things i like to do is i like to develop software so i uh kind of gone bonkers with fantasy grounds and i cranked out a, a theme and some really sweet stuff for icons which is the uh my my game that I'm going to be running. So, uh, and then I have some other things as well. But I'm I'm Which a I big think role you need player. players for right. You need yeah, absolutely. And players, we'll be right? yeah we'll be posting that pretty pretty soon. And uh, yeah, I'm looking for people that that like to role play. I mean, that's my that's my favorite thing. I mean, what really sucks is that I was doing this for a long time, and then we were even doing it on stream with David for a long time. But it takes like freaking Matt Mercer. You know, suddenly he explodes, right? Because because it's Who? just him doing all this role playing stuff and <clears throat> from like this? Critical Role. <laughs> you guys don't know about that guy? No, I've never mm -hmm. heard of Critical Role. You've never heard nope. that guy in no. Critical Role? Don't yeah. know. It's, it's just a weird thing, but yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been pretty sweet. And I think since then, uh, since uh, since we've played, since we started, I mean, I've I've gone back and played a lot of the old games that I used to play back in the day, but. Uh, I'll tell you, you guys don't like 5e, or not everybody likes 5e, but I've had a lot of fun with 5e. But my the biggest thing that I had the most fun streaming uh, and what really got me back into it, and this is what I originally used uh, when, I, when I finally got the group back in, is we played a lot of Pathfinder. So I've been pretty much GMing everything since high school. So uh, it, it really hooked up, and I love the way that Pathfinder worked, the first rule set. And uh, from there, it just it went, and that's where I am now. On. So when when you say is do you mean geek and sundry? Is that what yeah, you mean? geek and sundry? Oh, okay, yeah, I've heard of them then. So. Warm food. Do you have a ghost that moves <clears throat> the dog's bowl across your floor behind you? I do. It's just the one. It's a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys say that? I did. Dog, that was that was the, that was my dog actually. I mean, he's carrying the no, bowl the, around because we got a. No, he wasn't carrying the bowl. The bowl yeah. moved by itself, and the dog went after it. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, is bol is poltergeist the same as a ghost? Yeah, it's oh, a right. cord. So then, yeah, it's, it's a ghost. It's the cord from the oxygen is what was moving the bowl. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my uh, that's my mother in law. She likes to walk around with her oxygen every once in a while. She's really easy to find if we need her. We just start pulling on the <laughs> oxygen cord. Like, where is she? I don't know. Is she downstairs? I don't know. You just start pulling. And then she's like, help me. Uh, so I, you guys, I, I'll tell you how I got into gaming. I, I, I've told this, a lot of people have asked me several times throughout the years. And I, my parents got jobs out at NASA back in the middle to late 70s. So we moved to a town called Titusville, which was basically built for NASA back in the 50s when Kennedy just, you know, just started having an open wallet for, for NASA. So we moved out there and there were no schools out where I lived. In fact, 
I had moved to to a place called Port St. John that was at all the streets and stuff were from were from the 60s. But I guess no houses were ever built out there. And our house was built on a road that was just in disarray, grass growing. I mean, it was like because nobody lived out there and there were no street signs. There were these like I'd say four foot tall concrete post with hand drawn street names on them. In fact, it, we didn't even know what street we were on until they put one on for us when my parents bought property out there. And now it's like a huge it's its own city now. And there were no schools out there. So every couple months I was shipped to all kinds of different schools in my county and the next county over. Sometimes I remember that it was like a two hour drive to go to school sometimes on the school bus. I mean, it was absolutely horrible. So we, we went to, uh, I actually moved into this place called Mims, Florida is a total hillbilly place. So I went, you know, to Mims elementary and then I was there and then I went to another school called Fair Glen, And then I went to Coquina and, you know, going to school. Did you say time, Coquina? Coquina, C O Q. Man, C- oh, yeah, okay. C-O-Q- Cocaina. Yeah, U-I-N-A. No, it's like, and a, the Cougars. And oh, I thought maybe cocaine was there. So when I went to Coquina, there was this, uh, the school was on top of that this hill. High and you look down, and there was uh, like three massive trees that just shaded. I mean, these trees were massive. And then there were a bunch of old tractor tires, these giant tractor tires and i watched these kids because i didn't know anybody and i was in it was 1984 so i think i was in i was in fourth grade and it was the third graders down there and they were building these forts with the tires and they were like stick fighting and stuff and every day they came up the hill because we switched you know like fourth grade would then go down there and stuff well these (laughs) These kids would come up and all you could see was eyes and teeth because they were just covered in like muddy water from the tractor tires and stuff. So I went up to him like, what do you got? What are you guys doing down there? And the one kid, my friend James, he goes, what are you going to do, big kid? Are you going to pick on us like everybody else does? And I was like, no, dude, I, I want to, I'm like, that looks fun. What are you guys doing? I want to play with you guys. And they were like, that was his goblin voice. We're playing a game called Dungeons and Dragons. My friend had a high pitched voice. That's why I'm doing it. And he goes, we're playing Dungeons and Dragons. And I was like, you mean like the Saturday morning cartoon? And, and the, you know, and I was like, holy cow, this is pretty cool. I'm like, I want to play. And so there were three kids and they started pulling out these nasty, dirty ass character sheets with like stick figures drawn and like a shield for AC and all this stuff. And I was like, this is awesome. And my, my mom was actually picking me up from school that day after she got off work. And no, it was the next day because I, by this time I was down in the tire. I snuck down there with the, the third graders to play with them. So I come back to class, like just all muddy and, you know, spider bites all over me and stuff. And so my mom picked me up. She said, what the hell happened to you? And she says, did you get into a fight? And I'm like, no, I'm playing a game with these other kids and we need to go to the mall so I can get uh, uh, some books. So my mom took, we went to the mall and I got a couple D and D books and uh, I got like the, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was B1. And then I got a, I think I got the, uh, I got AC1. It was the uh, tavern book with all the NPCs. And I was just enamored from that point, just reading about D&D. And that was it. And we played in that game. We start, because I let my friend use In Search of the Unknown. We played from 84 all the way up until about, 2000 when EverQuest came out and we were so enamored we don't have to roll dice anymore everything's done for you uh, and that's what we did so there was quite a few years that I didn't play D&D uh, so, but I always loved it I loved Talislanta, we played that as a kid um, we, we tried uh, Star Frontiers uh, we tried Gamma World for a little bit, Roll Master but nothing was like D&D man D&D was like D&D, you know, 
What even though if we played Talislanta or if we played anything else, we always said let's play D and D. That was like let's play a game, and uh, so yeah, it was uh, played EverQuest, and then I got back into it uh, during Neverwinter Online when that uh, fourth edition, by the way, fourth edition mechanics. If you didn't know, great game. Uh, so I met uh, a bunch of people. I met Vey. I met Chili. My son was playing with me. And somebody had the hairball idea one day to say, hey, let's play some real d and And then when we said, who's going to DM? It was just absolutely silent. Nobody said anything. So I said, all right, I'll bite the bullet. I'll, I'll DM. Because when I was a kid, I saw how much work my friend James and my friend Terry put into it. And I was like, dude, you guys are stupid for putting this much time into, you know, let's just open up the book and let's start, you know, playing. But yeah, so I, I, I decided to go ahead and, and uh, play D and D again. So we were playing basic D and D and yeah, it was because I had all the basic D and D stuff. I mean, all that stuff behind you, all those, all those plastic containers is all 150 basic D and D books. Thank you to Drake, by the way for completing the collection and uh yeah it was awesome so we were playing basic D and we had this uh we had this rule nazi pathfinder player and i had heard of pathfinder through the years and um this is sort of like a sorry i'm like hogging up all the time here but uh there was this rule nazi that that we had and you know there's no attacks of opportunity there's no counter spelling there's none of this stuff in basic D and D like, and he, and he knew that we were playing basic D and D. So in the middle of the game, he's sending me all these emails, dude, this is the way we need to play. And I can't believe you don't know the rules. And I said, I just, and we were streaming this by the way. And I, I literally stopped and you can see this in the very first stream that I ever did. You can watch the podcast. And I stopped it. And I said, I said, dude, stop sending me emails do you not realize, did you not get the f and memo that we were playing basic Dungeons and Dragons and your Pathfinder game is obsolete in this game? And then he had the balls to say, well, I can't believe you don't know the rules. Dude, I was so mad when he said that. And I said, And you finally got word food set straight. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Did you say rules? I, I said obviously it. you don't know that we're playing basic D and D. I said there's no attacks of opportunity. There's none of this stuff. And everybody is now sending me tell saying, dude, get rid of this guy. He is not making the game fun. So I kicked him out of the game. I'm like, dude, thanks for playing. Oh, dude, and I booted him out. out of the game. And then my friend Chili. He said, oh, way to go, Dave. You just took that one off of your off. You just put that notch on your belt and on your uh, bucket list. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, dude, you just beat up a dude that was handicapped in a wheelchair. I was like, no way, dude. I was like, <laughs> and then I said, you know what? Who cares? I said, if you're going to be like that to someone, you should, you should expect some type of retaliation. And then after I kicked him out of the game, he sent me this email saying, dude, I'm so sorry. I thought we were playing Pathfinder. I said, no, you knew we were playing basic D and D because I emailed everybody and everybody knew that we were playing this and nobody so get else to the part had a problem. Where you burned his house down, so anyway, <laughs> yeah. So I got that, they, you know, Chile and Vey and everybody gave me a hard time for that for quite a while. So that was, that was kind of funny. Uh, but that's that's how I got into it. We played the same game, like I said, for fifteen years. Uh, I got a level thirty-one cleric that's from Basic D and D and Fantasy Grounds. In fact, I didn't even start with. Yeah, I did actually start with Fantasy Grounds. Uh, my son found it, so I bought it. And then when I purchased the license and everything, I bought it for Castles and Crusades. And Savage Worlds. And then when I started it up, I just had so many errors. And this is just when Doug and John bought it. And I was like this. And I was very vocal about back in the day. And I deleted all those videos. Don't believe, believe me. You don't you, want, you, you don't want to see those videos. But I was very vocal about it. And then uh, a lot of my players were like, dude, have you checked out? And then I went to using a competitor. Uh, and then... When 5e came out and Fantasy Grounds got the license and everything, 
they were like, hey, have you seen how Fantasy Grounds has got 5e? I said, it ain't going to work. I said, nothing works in that software. What are you talking about? Because I was so vocal. And then they were like, oh, you got to check it out. It's pretty awesome. So I said, okay. So I did it live on stream and I downloaded it. I had my license. I put it in and then I, I uh, started, I bought the player's handbook. And I was like, all right, I'm going to show you guys. And then it was like butter, man. It was like when I started using Fantasy Grounds, I was like, I said, within five minutes, I said, guys, I'm eating my words here. <laughs> I said, this program is amazing. And from there, it was just, I did the same thing as Rob. I bought every single D&D 5e I bought. I was, uh, in fact, the first conversation that I had with Doug, he's like, we consider you a whale as a customer because I just had pages of stuff that I had bought for Savage Worlds really? and everything it's because else. because you bought stuff from it? And, oh, no, because it was such a great program. And it didn't work when I originally bought it. And then after, you know, they, they took, you know, we talked about how they took over and, and redid everything. And I was like, wow, this pretty amazing program. So I've been with it ever since. And now I'm a full-time employee with Fantasy Grounds since December 2018. It's pretty awesome. I play it damn enough. 2017, mm-hmm. Dave. Uh, no, it was 2018. Wasn't it, it Chris? Because was, you said you, you, Chris was the witness because um, you were in town. Yeah, I think it was 2017. You want to know how I know that, Dave? I was, I was, I was February 18 and you were before me. Yeah, I think it, it was the tail end of 17 because it was Isn't right around, sir? oh my goodness, like Thanksgiving or some crap. Time Holy shit, you, you have a year's fun. worth of back pay coming to you, Dave. So, <laughs> so yeah, because Chris, you were in town for some work convention or something like that. Yeah, so we met at we met at the strip bar, and uh, no, I'm just kidding. We didn't do that. We we met at a uh, ale house, and uh, Doug and I went over there, and yeah, we saw, that was just when I got hired with the company, and I had to sign a contract, and Chris was the witness for signing that contract. That's right, it was, it was pretty cool. So, yeah. yep, that was December of seventeen. Wow. So that'll be three years. Oh, it will, yeah. It'll be three years. Yeah. So wow, I'm a year behind. My apologies about that. Wow. So that's that's my 30 minute story. My bad. That's a beautiful story, Dave. Thanks, Worm. I saw you shed a tear over there. Yeah, I, I tried to keep mine. A little bit. I tried to keep mine short and sweet. Mm. You want to do well, yours I was again? Like, well, you guys only talked for like 30 seconds, so I was like, well, I'm gonna have to. We knew. We knew you were the very last person uh-huh. here. Like, no, I'm I was to... adjusting my time, uh-huh. depending on your, you know, everyone else's times that they were putting in. So, uh, so what kind of games you guys got going on this month? I know, I know, Bell. Dead she's lands. playing in my basic D and D game, and it's going well. We're on session four. We had one person die, but I give him the the old get out of jail card free, just to kind of explain how death and dying worked in basic D and D, but. How about you, Drake? Yeah. Mr. Clean Shaven. Looking so good, Drake. I am running uh, Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus uh, on Rob 2 es stream. Uh, cool. I am running Call from the Deep on my stream on Tuesday nights. And on Sunday, I'm running a game that's not streamed for my local uh, buddies, my tabletop guys that I've converted to Fantasy Grounds. <laughs> And uh, and I'm going to be starting a new streamed game soon, but I haven't decided on what and when. It's either going to be it's a it's definitely a homebrew. Did you say uh, Pathfinder two? Uh, no, it's going to be five E. Oh. oh. Yep. <laughs> I was actually uh, I was actually considering doing a Cholt homebrew, Ooh. but. What about you, Angorgio, with your list of games? This will take an hour. Everybody See, pull up a seat. I was going to say, <laughs> this is why he's saved so much time right. before. Just tell us what days you don't game. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, I pulled up my schedule because I have a okay. whole... Yeah, I, have a I whole, need to go yes. get my pajamas on. I have, a, I have a full-ass schedule. Uh, they are all streamed on twitch.tv slash Angorgio. Um, I love it. The plug. The shameless plug. I love it. Damn right. Uh, and it was funny. I didn't start... I wasn't going to stream, and then I watched Rob's one of Rob's shows, and I was like, okay, he's kind of an ass. I'm kind of an ass. He does well. It's going to go great. 
I don't know. Well. So much better you're than this guy. Let me stream. And now, and now I have <laughs> uh, eight games. So Wednesdays at 9 a.m. we play Vampire the Masquerades uh, with Azel. Uh, he is our storyteller. Thursday mornings I play, uh, I DM Tomb of Annihilation. We just had session one last week. It was glorious. I killed somebody. Friday uh, at 5 p.m. I am DMing Tyranny of Dragons. We we're about halfway done with that. And then Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, there's a 12-hour stream. I DM two games. I DM two games and I play in one game. Uh, Sunday at 5 a.m. I DM a game from 5 to 8. And then... <laughs> And then from nine to noon, I play in uh, Princess of the Apocalypse. Wow. And somebody wants to start up another game, but I <laughs> probably going to tell him to piss off. Anyway, so now, that is Dave, me. are you going to give him the speech you gave me four years ago? He already did. He, oh, he did. I got okay. it too. Chris I got, got it. that speech was, too. Drake, everybody got it. I, I think. I, I was when I started. I was like you and Gorgio. I had, I was, I was in ten games a week. Eight of them as DM, and only two of those were not on stream. So I was actually playing like with people at a kitchen table, two games, and then eight games more. And Dave's like, "Dude, you're gonna fucking burn out." <laughs> well, I wasn't going to, and then people were like, "Well," and then like uh, Twitch and don't subs be sucked and in. money, Twitch and subs and money, and I'm like, "Well, uh, eff it." Mm-hmm. So. But uh, that's yeah. I'm like, next right month, that's gonna go away. You'll be I'm, down to two games. No, I'm I'm right about my limit right now. Didn't so. I say I'll tell you so, Rob? Didn't I say in another six months to a year you're gonna say, "Wow, Dave, you were right." Yeah, well, and I it, didn't like I didn't burn out. I just got lazy. Well, we have all these games that I actually want to play, and I hate trying to sell myself because I'm shitty at selling myself. So I was like, I'll just DM and you come and play, and then I'll just DM you. Yeah. Schmo, I, Schmo, you had the. I made that talk. I think you were the first person. Yeah, I, mean, I give the talk. I to. I did get burned out. I so I had I started streaming Adventures League games before you were technically allowed to do that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I was. What was I running? Like five or six games a week. Mm -hmm. And I did. I got burned out real bad. Um, so now I have a Storm King Thunder game on Friday. We got. Should be two episodes left of that. Then we're going to move over to um, Pathfinder Shadow Two, of the, Shadow of the Demon Lord. That's stuff. a great game too. Yes, it is. It, yes, it is. Which I popped Bag a couple of guys. Bagadix. Yeah. Bagadix. Too bad I lost all of my players and DMs content modules. <sighs> um. I'm going to be adding a game on Saturdays uh, called Ooh. The Genesis. Um, I'm currently reading through the massive content on that, which they just made uh, free. Um, I'm throwing out little hints and riddles on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Yeah. Um, and then Sunday, I may end up adding an in-person game with uh, my kids and their some of their friends doing the Essentials Kit. Nice. The Rick and Morty set? No, the actual <laughs> essential kit. Or it may just be a horrible parent and throw them into punk apocalyptic or something like that. Yeah, I was just fixing to start a game oh, before all cool. of this outbreak happened. And we were going to be playing Starfinder. And oh, Dave, it's okay. We have dude. To, Don't we have to wait. He's choking up about it. Unfor well, I was, I was going to do a burp, but I was like, I think I'll suppress it. I thought maybe you're really super sad. We were going to nope. start a Starfinder game. No, I was looking heavy. forward to it, though. Marbani, what kind of games you got going on? You got you got some games going on. I think you're yeah you're playing uh, a couple too, aren't you? I'm I am only uh, GMing one game. GM Savage Worlds. You're GM. You're not a DM. But uh, uh, Thursday night, and Drake plays in that game. Um, Savage Worlds Deadlands, and we're doing the Flood. Uh, and it's fun, man. Uh, cowboys and uh, zombies and demons and and all kinds of really weird shit. Uh, the Weird West is a fantabulous place. And, That's a uh, great adventure too. It's 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 a big sandbox, and and I'm having fun letting the people letting the uh, 
players take their characters and run where they want. I've lost, however, and I kept reminding them that, uh, you know, they do call this Deadlands for a reason. And two sessions in a row, or maybe it was there was one in between, but uh, lost two characters. Um, and so I've got some interesting new character introduction queued up for Thursday night. Uh, because one of the characters, the character we lost last session, there was actually two that went down. <clears throat> but one of them was the one that died a couple of weeks before. And believe it or not, I left him in the combat tracker. So the next round, the cards were dealt and he pulled a joker. Ooh. So he came back harrowed. Well, he and this other character both went down last session and the last thing drake's character timmons said before they rode off in the wagons was i'm gonna bury them both right here so i've got a harrowed character that's buried in the mud buried in the dirt and uh, uh that's where we're going to come in thursday night so it'll be interesting um friday night i play in venerick dm venerick's uh, Curse of Strahd game. I stream that on my channel, twitch.tv slash Marbanya. Uh, Drake plays in that as well. Saturday night, I'm in uh, Rob's stream with uh, DM Drake and Descent into Avernus. Tuesday night, I am in Drake's Call from the Deep game. So, um, lots of combat. things going on. Oof, that was massive. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, what do you got going on, bud? Well, Nothing. David, my current schedule is Friday night. Uh, Joe Numbers is DMing uh, Waterdeep. <laughs> Joe Numbers, Mad <laughs> Mage. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, a good. He's Joe fun. Numbers, uh... And we we're on episode fifty-five of that campaign. We've been playing that campaign since December eighteen, mm. so year and a half, and we're mm. halfway through, maybe. Uh, wow. the, the the group that I play with is a completionist group. They like to open every door. And Saturday night, as you've heard twice mentioned before, uh, Drake is DMing uh, our AARPG group, uh, Assholes Go to Hell, Descent to Avernus. And that's fun. That's Saturday night. Sunday is, of course, the All Things Fantasy Grounds talk show, which I've been doing. And the one airing this week will be episode 115. So mm -hmm. a lot of those. And then on Wednesday, I have a new thing that we've been doing a couple weeks called Round Robin, where uh, Remedies, uh, Robin Nix and I, just basically bullshit, and that's the show. We talk about gaming and whatever, and uh, that's a lot of fun, and people seem to enjoy it because people have been showing up for it. So Yay. Right yeah, I put all my bots to go to that thing on every Sunday, all those bots go no, there. that's why. You what, didn't what know? you got going on? Man, that's getting super <laughs> exciting, Dave. I, on the the twenty eighth of this month, we'll be doing a uh, we'll be doing an icons. Uh, I'll, I'll do icon session zero. So for those people here, let me just jump over here real fast. If you uh, see, if you don't know, give me a sec. You should put your the way to contact you as well because you're looking for players. So. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So I wanted to just give you guys a quick, quick example here. So I have a, a couple of things. I'm going to do this a little bit different than most people do their stuff. But the game I'm running is Icons. It's a superhero role playing game. So I, uh, I made this pretty sweet uh, set with all the rule set. And I made it so all the people, uh, you, you pull out the characters and then we'll have a little role play when you put them on here. And then I've also, uh, since I'm a developer, I created this app where you can, uh, we'll all have our characters that we can, if you have face rig, it'll work with that. But if you don't, it'll work without it. Where, where you can sit there and move your character around and, uh, you know, give them expressions and stuff. So they get mad or, or whatever. So the idea is, is that we'll make your characters and then during the role play, we'll be able to role play with some of these characters. And then there's the, the typical um, battle maps that are set up. So... Uh, I'll be doing that at the uh, beginning of next month, but we'll be, I still need people that are that's interested in superhero role-playing games. The session, uh, I'm kind of a jokester, so the setting's a little no. bit different. I don't know if you guys knew that, but the setting's a little bit different than what you'd normally see. Like, for example, uh, the people that, uh, you know, normally people like to just get the super powerful superheroes, so the 
the thing that I created is something called the B team, which is all the powerful superheroes have mysteriously vanished, and it's only the losers that are left. So I got like a guy that's a, a you know, he's a mortal, and he's like 93 years old, and he dies like every 15 days or something. I've I've got another guy called the procrastinator who, uh, you know, one guy invisible, but he's only invisible when he shuts his hand, shuts his eyes. So the idea is, is when you create a character, you'll create him with a little bit of a weakness. So I think that's much more fun to play. So we'll we'll be doing that uh, uh, for probably about six weeks, and then for those people that know uh, me, we're going to jump into Gamma World, where I have a pretty sweet. Gamma World adventure that I've already built out that's uh, excellent. We'll be playing a rule set that's homebrew called Gamma 5, which is a uh, Gamma World from uh, homebrew, uh, from, from 5e. So it's, uh, it's actually it's really nice. So anybody that's interested, you can chat me here in Discord. You can talk to Bell uh, if, if I'm not around, and uh, we'll get you know, we'll get you hooked up. We'll talk to you if you love to role play. And if you love superheroes, I think this will definitely be the game for you. And speaking of that, I actually have a person in my Discord who were just talking about looking for a superhero game. So uh, I can pass him on to you. Yeah, no, I don't want that guy. Uh, he's a good role player. He's a real good role player. Uh, yeah, I, miss, I, mean, I, I miss having him on my table, actually. Yeah, I'm just looking for people that just, I mean, I'm not looking, I'm not like, it's not like super serious, but I want people that are just willing to have fun. We'll go for about three hours or something. It'll be on Saturday from uh, uh, one mountain to five mountain, or two mountain to five mountain. So, uh you know, just just somebody that's going to sit there and have fun. And if it works out, and if you like doing what we're doing, I'm going to probably map the same thing to uh, to my Gamma World game. Uh, but I've got a whole bunch of different uh, ideas for those people that uh, uh, know me. I wrote a Twitch bot so that people watching in Twitch can play a character. They all vote on what that character is going to do, and then it'll alert me. So, for example, if you if everybody voted to like, uh, you know, kill some bear or something, then it'll send an alert. So, so I have stuff like that. So I try to get everybody involved, but we're going to do something a little bit different. And then if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I just blame Dave. Just like, Oh, I, I don't get the audience involved anymore. I tried that several times and it's just uh, too big of a train wreck in, in my oh, opinion. So much well, I, got, fun. I got two subscribers. I got two subscribers <laughs> to my Twitch already. So both of those people are, both of them uh, subscribed because I was playing Tabletop Simulator. That was me and my I, off just, account. So you're welcome. <laughs> that's probably what it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I do more youtube than i do twitch now i i you know i'll make a lot you know i make videos on you know mechanics of games and stuff uh, everybody asks me hey what do you got on your shelf so i did a whole series on what's on dave's shelf and uh so i just got back into games about uh well this year in 2020 i started you know getting more active and stuff because i was literally burnt out and trying to do that with a more than 40 hour a week full-time job it was just impossible so now i'm able to start doing things again and it's been really nice uh, but i had my my first game and uh, probably about uh, i'd say about eight months to ten months start back up we're playing basic dungeons and dragons on sunday at 4 p.m mountain we play for two hours we pretty much play every week and we're doing b1 in search of the unknown uh, old school feel. It's not, you know, I do a lot of role playing as well. So it's just not, hey, kicking a door, rolling initiative, D6. It's not like that. Uh, and now towards the end of the month, now that I have a, uh, I have some days off now every week, I'll be starting my Pathfinder 2 campaign on May 30th. And we are going to be playing the new uh, Pathfinder 2 Extinction Curse Adventure Path. And basically the players, uh, you know, it's a bunch of mystery uh, helping a bunch of towns. And plus they're running a circus as a as a mini game inside. So, you know, you, you're you have performers in your circus, plus your characters can be per, uh, performers or actors. They can be security. They can be a medic in case someone falls off the traffic, pees and breaks their neck. They can be security and take care of the manage the hecklers or 
or just be a, like like a rouse about or something. So yeah, it's going to be a fun time. We'll be doing that, and uh, we'll start that on the thirtieth. And other than that, I just have videos coming out on YouTube and stuff. I try to do at least at least a video or two. I do a lot of uh, interviews with folks uh, in the industry as well. Last week, I had on James Ward, the creator of Gamma World, the creator of Metamorphosis Alpha. Uh, and a bunch of other content uh, next week. Which is I've like got... the precursor to Gamma World too. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. So, so if we're I, talking I... about all of our posts, I forgot to tell you about all the stuff I put on Pornhub. Should yeah, I go into that, that or? <laughs> so, so so I also have Bruce oh, Hurley yeah. going to be on next week, and he you know he's done a lot of stuff with basic Dungeons and Dragons and Dragon Lance and stuff like that. So who is it, Dave? Bruce Hurd. Bruce Hurd. Oh, Bruce Hurd. Okay. Bruce Hurd. Yeah. And I'm hoping to uh, line up uh, Elmore, the artist, and a couple of others as well. So, yeah. So that's what I got going on. And, hey, we uh, we did pretty good. We have four minutes left. So this is our first roundtable. We'll have another one. Do you want to break you. dance for four minutes, Dave? No, but I'll let you do the truffle shuffle or something if you want for four minutes straight. <laughs> Let's pick a topic. Let's pick Some a topic movies. for next show. Yeah, yeah so what do you guys think? Yeah, I think that's a great or, way to or, end or, the show. chat questions. Yeah, well, we could take a couple. Of, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and feel free to ask them. But yeah, let's, as let's we're waiting for chat. a couple of questions, what do you guys oh, think the for chat. a topic next month? I never even looked at the chat the whole time. Chat, chat, chat is going said, crazy, dude. In answer to topic. the chat, yes, I am incredibly awesome. Topics? Oh, no, sorry, that was me. I posted that. Sorry. Any topics? Uh, all the ladies that were asking in chat, the answer is six. Still alive. That's it? That's it. I'll work wow. with what I got. That happens. Um, uh, how about uh, the worst D&D session ever? Oh, God. Just D&D <laughs> or? Uh, uh, or uh, yeah, no, it doesn't have this, to be D&D. Drake, it's it's yeah. this Saturday night, this coming Saturday night. This, this coming up? This, yeah, I'll have to <laughs> my, record that. It's going to be live on Twitch. <laughs> Mine, my, my, my worst was uh, about four weeks ago in a vampire game, so it's still fresh in my mind. Mine was a Pathfinder first edition game. Where I actually literally had the players yelling and cussing at each other. Uh, yeah. So that was my worst. So what do you guys think? You guys want to do worst D&D session that you ever were in as a player or a DM? How about that for next month? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I love well, you a... as a player. They've all been great yeah. as a DM, though. I mean, I'm just... Yeah, there's nothing I can do wrong there. Never DM. I mean, there was that time that that guy died right in the middle of the game, but... Uh, yeah, we had to get the... Other animal. than that, you know, whatever. I actually so, did have a player... Yeah, he was in time. my game. No, he, yeah, he was... I remember that. ...in the final stages of cancer, and uh, oh. he had to turn off his webcam because he started going into uh, having seizures and stuff, so... But you could hear it. Well, Doug's uh, been robbed to the hospital. I don't think we yeah. have to do a show next week or next time on that because that story wins right there. The guy with cancer, he wins. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> no, that, that wasn't that. the worst game ever, though. Uh, but he oh, died yeah. two days later. He passed away. Damn. Oh, damn. Yeah. That's yeah. a cool way to end this show, though. But well, we, did a, yeah. we did a fundraiser yeah, for him, and uh, my community raised uh, around $3,000 for his family and i sent it to the wife sent all 100 dollars to his wife never yeah. nice through uh through the fund me page they had a fund me page and i never heard back from from them well but so, you can understand she didn't write I mean, D &D, but i was i was sent all of his all of his books when he passed away well that's was, because wow. she thinks the D, D is what killed him yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, it was a good guy's name was James. So, all right. To end on that note, uh, I don't see any oh, questions or anything. Well, there's so, there is yeah. one. Somebody asked about the Kevin story. Oh, oh right. okay. So I'll I'll tell the Kevin story real quick. Um, as he looks at the <laughs> clock on the wall. <laughs> I well because I, I, I don't, start I don't twitching wanna... a little bit. Yeah, well, you so can tell that I, I, next roundtable. I can tell it next time. I we can save it, or I can tell it. I, I actually skipped it on purpose because I, you know, because when we were telling, it was it's part of my origin story. But do you want me to tell it now, Dave, or do you want to do it next time? It's up to you. If you want to wait till next time, 
That's fine. All right, I'll tell the it, Kevin yeah. story then. So, okay. so when I that first session I played, there was this kid Kevin, and and my friend from high school got together three or four of us, and none of us knew how to play Dungeons and Dragons, but this other kid who was younger than us did, Kevin, and he was twelve. So we, you know, we had one copy of the player's handbook, and we poured over it for four hours. And, you know, we're each making our characters. I had a magic user, and in D&D, a magic user had a D4 hit points. I had two hit points, level one magic user. Somebody was a fighter. Somebody was a rogue. And, I mean, you know, you can imagine having one player's handbook and passing it around. Give me, I I need the spells. I need the spells. You know, just doing that shit for four hours and getting our characters all together. Everyone's super excited. So we start the game, and, you know, you got to, you got in order to appreciate it, you got to really just think about how much we prepared for this and that none of us knew what we were doing. So this 12 year old Kevin DM, he says, you guys are walking down a dark alley and there's shadows everywhere. He's setting the scene and he goes, you see some ne'er-do-well figures in the distance. And then he takes a piece of paper and he writes it, he writes on it and he, he just slides it over to me. And I, I'm so excited. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Right? So I, oh, I take the note and it says on the note. You're you have been shot in the chest with a crossbow bolt. You are dead. Don't say anything to any of the other players. And I was like, "What is this?" And I and I was an angry young man. You guys, I was a very angry young man. Uh, I, I can't believe that I, shit. I couldn't. Really? There was no way I would and ever I was like, imagine what that. What the Rob? fuck is this? Fuck you and fuck this game and fuck all you and I'm fucking out of here. And I tried to flip the table, which was an 800 pound oak pool table. So it was just, you know. And I Mental start storming out. The multiple f bombs at uh, time <laughs> one hour, so I can yeah. edit that out. <laughs> and so then uh, I start storming out, and my friend's like, "Hey, wait, wait, come back, come back, come back!" And he, he and then he says to this kid, Kevin, uh, "Don't you know you can't do that? We played, we've spent all this time, and it's our first day, and you can't just kill a guy immediately." So we reset and we started playing the game again. And if my friend hadn't have pulled me back, I would not be sitting here talking to you guys right now because I would have never played D&D again. Mm. And that then after cute. all these years, I was reminded by that person who who, uh, who told me uh, to come back that that kid's name, in fact, was not Kevin. It was Max. But I had just remembered it as Kevin. So now it's the, it's become the Kevin story. And that's how I tell it. But his, name, his real name is Max. But anyway, so that's the Kevin to be, story. There needs to be an embellished ending like... And then I found out later that Max works at Wizards of the Coast, and he's the one that created 5e. He's a no, the story would – how I would Gary like, how I would like to – How I would like that story to end is when he was about 17, he drove off a cliff and is dead now. That's what I would like <laughs> the story to end. Drives that is so off a cliff know. and tastes his own blood, right? <laughs> he's, he slid under a gas truck and tastes his own gas blood. Truck, I yeah. die. I uh, want my uh, land is, yeah. that, Landed uh, on a crossbow uh, bolt. Through the that's, freaking heart. That's, that's what I would. Yeah, that's what I would. And so, in my ex, Discord, there's a there's a, an emoji fuck Kevin, and on my on my Twitch blood. channel, you can type in exclamation Kevin and get an answer. It's a whole fucking thing with this mm-hmm. Kevin. Mm-hmm. I have a story yeah, that I'll tell you, you something dead. like that, Rob, and I'll say it next month. My my most triumphant D and D story that involves my friend Gary. So I'll I'll tell that story. Remind me about, okay, Gary. Uh, about yeah, yeah the Gary story next month. So whose real name is Jim? Got it. No, his Your, real name is, is Gary. Gary story. His real name's Kevin. It's probably Mine the same the guy. Sandwich story. <laughs> yeah. By the story. way, Bell, you talk too much. God damn. <laughs> okay. I, I, I have said a one story, thing so. the whole time. <laughs> All right, everybody. So that's where we're going to end here. Next month's topic is the worst game you've ever played or DM'd in. So, uh, all right. Oof, I'm scared. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, so, should I start perusing all your videos now, Dave? I don't know how many are still online. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right. All right, everybody. So, thanks for hanging out with us today. We'll see you guys next month, probably the first Monday of the month. Uh, now that we're kind of on some uh, somewhat of a permanent schedule, and all of all of these jokers that that I'm with, uh, we'll see you guys next month. And uh, thanks everybody for hanging out. So until next time, uh, everybody check out all the channels in the Tabletop RPG Network, and we'll see you next month. Bye everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye Felicia. Bye. Bye. Thanks for hanging. Bye.